This is hopefully the first in many videos on my YouTube channel, The Cruise Collection, uh, where I intend to show a lot of the different pieces in my music collection that I have amassed over the last 40 plus years, uh, whether it's vinyl, cassette, or CD, or a mix of all three. Uh, but the purpose is also to not only share some of the gems that I've collected over the years, but share stories of the how I got some of those items, uh, share stories about you know things uh, dealing with the bands, whether I've met the bands or or just stories that I've read in countless magazines that I've read about um, over the course of the years, or just to introduce people to some new bands. And when I say new bands, it may possibly be a band that put out an album in 1986 that nobody really knew much about. You know, and there, there's a lot of metal fans out there, and so you're really very rarely going to find an, a band that nobody knows. But there are a lot of bands out there that very few people know about. And I have experienced it time and time again where uh, you know, on Facebook even you put those those bands out there and uh, people come back, you know, they, they, they checked the they checked YouTube and they found the band and they're like, wow, I, I never heard this band before. This is awesome. I'm gonna check this band out. The bad part is when they go to check this band out. And we all know this, you go to eBay or whatever to purchase the CD, uh, it's out of print. And when it's out of print, you know what that means. Sometimes you pay way too much money. So uh, I hope to also maybe keep people updated on any reissues that are coming out. If I've heard of anything uh, about any reissues coming out, especially if I hear about reissues, then I will feature those, those bands so that everybody would be able to be aware when they're coming out so that if there's something that I play or talk about that you really are interested in getting you know that you're not going to have to cash in your 401k to be able to get the album if you really truly want it. Um, I also am a firm believer in there are two types of people that listen to music. There are those people that have to have it only as just background noise um, you know or they go out to the club or they go out to the bar or they're out with their friends and they got background music and they're all just you know chatting and it's just in the background and they don't really pay much attention to it you know they go to a concert but at the concert they're more busy you know dancing with the music and really not into the music per se and then there's people like me that can't go two blocks without taking an iPod, plugging it into the, the car stereo, and listening to music. I can't mow the lawn without listening to music. I'm, I'm surprised I can go to the bathroom without listening to music. Uh, it's uh, it's one of those things that for me, it's it's something that has helped me in periods of my life when I've been down, when I'm angry, helps calm me down. When I just want to mellow out, when I when I want to when I want to be just calm, it it helps me mellow out. It's my drug. I don't do drugs, so that's that's my drug. Um, and I've always felt that there's a lot of people that fall into the category of they listen to background music. Those are radio listeners in a lot of cases uh, to me. I think they're the, the metal community aren't those people uh, because there's a lot of us out there that listen to a lot of different stuff. And it isn't just so that you hear it for background music. I mean, there, there are people that are at shows I go to screaming every lyric to every song, even songs I don't know. And I'll be honest, I've listened to this music for a long time. Screaming lyrics I don't know. And it's just because they're so passionate about whatever band is playing. That's their band. And, and they're, it's their opportunity to show the band, man, I know those words. I know this, the lyrics to your music. I love this band. You know? Um, I give people flack from time to time for listening to, for example, Five Finger Death Punch. Um, there's a there's a look, there's an attitude that that I don't know if it's real or not that I see from from people that listen to the, that type of music. And the local radio station here, I live in Nebraska, plays bands like that. And you know, you have a a, a group of listeners that listen to that music. And uh, I've always said, give me an hour, and I can play you stuff for an hour that would make you not want to listen to that ever again because there's so much stuff out there if you gave it a chance unfortunately radio doesn't work that way uh, you have to chart on billboard you have to be something that 
you know, people want to hear. And, and the unfortunate part is they're making that decision for you. You're not getting that opportunity. Internet is a godsend in a way because it gives you the opportunity to check out stuff for yourself. When I started listening to metal, especially when I started getting into the underground stuff, it was it was a guess and by golly, you you went into the record store and you looked at an album cover, shit, that, that album cover looks cool, I'm gonna buy it. You had no idea what it was gonna sound like. Or you read a review in a magazine and you're basing your, you know, your judgment on somebody else's opinion. Sometimes it was good, sometimes it was bad. But, uh, you know, nowadays it's so easy for you to access that and hear that. So I scratch my head and say, why would you be satisfied with listening to the radio? Um, you know, when you have YouTube and, and, and I'm not an advocate of illegal downloads, obviously, with the collection that I've amassed. I don't believe in that. I don't, uh, and very rarely do I believe in, in purchasing on iTunes, but I do from time to time. But I purchase it, and even though it may be, maybe doesn't go to the band uh, in as great of a uh, level as if you bought the CD from the band directly, it's still money that's going back to the band. Um, I just, uh, I, you know, at least you have the ability to get the music now, you know. Uh, at the one point when I was, you know, in the mid 90s, we had record stores here that had a buy it, try it program where you could buy something, listen to it. And if you did not, uh, if you didn't like the, uh, like the CD, you could return it and they would let you get something else. Um, and so that was, uh, that was kind of a cool feature, but it was only on specific albums. Later you had, um, that same record store would let you open stuff. I mean, towards the end before it closed, you actually have them open the CD for you and they would let you listen to it before you bought it. Uh, it wasn't something they advertised, but I was in there so much that, uh, you know, pretty much anything I wanted to listen to before I bought it, they let me. Um, but on the other hand, the internet to me has spoiled people in that uh, there's no thrill to hunt anymore. So those of you old school collectors and metalheads know what I mean by that. Um, we would go years with certain CDs that we were looking for, we couldn't find. And then that one day you'd go to the one, you'd go every, every time you went to another town for a show or someplace different where you'd go to a CD shop you'd never been before and you'd find that one piece, that one CD that you've been searching for two years, that feeling. And a lot of times when I found stuff like that, people in the store probably looked at me like I was uh, crazy. Cause I mean, I would freak out. And even if I was by myself, oh my God, you know, and people are looking at you going, what the fuck's wrong with this guy? It was a thrill. And now you have people that you post a picture of, like say, for example, I post a picture of something I have in my collection and the name of the band or I post, generally I post a picture, I take pictures of the entire discography by a band and, and then post that. And I'll get an occasional comment saying, you know, could you, could you send a link with that? Well, you know, in this day and age, if you can't go to YouTube and I have the name of the band there and you can't type in the name of the band to search for, on YouTube for that band, that's, that's really not, that's pr pretty pathetic uh, and and close to being pretty lazy you know uh, when people do 90% of the legwork for you um, even when I do post links to, to stuff you know you have people where can I find that you know I, I was you know or I've you know I've looked all over for that I can't find it you go into into Google and you know, Google search the album and boom five different locations online show where you can purchase it for less than 15 bucks you know, it, it's not a lot of difficulty to find these things if you, if you just try. And it's not a lot of, it's not time consuming. And don't give me that about, you know, you don't have time. I have two kids. I'm a stay at home dad at, at, at the current time. So I have other activities that I have to do and other responsibilities I have. So I, I, I don't have every waking moment of the day to do that. So anyway, um, you know, I really think the internet has been a really great thing for, for music metal especially there's also it's it's come with its costs it's come with the the younger generations and by all means i mean no disrespect to anybody younger that's in the metal you know i've met so, a lot of kids that are and i say kids because i'm 47 years old a lot of kids are in their 18 to 22 that are very knowledgeable and, and a lot of that has to do again with the internet and and that it's it's been a godsend to people because 
the the same bands, 18 to 22 year old kids back in the late 80s, early 90s, if they weren't into underground music, I have no clue. They wouldn't they wouldn't have been in the same in the, at the same level. So, internet's for the most part, in my opinion, has been a great thing. So, some of you on here have followed me on Facebook and are in my groups, but there may be some of you that are watching this video that you know have not. So I'll kind of show you. This is my basement. So these are my shelves. I moved to this house, I bought this house about three years ago. And if you look down the way here, all the way down, all this is metal. Um, from hard rock to um, hair bands to thrash to death metal to black metal to doom metal to punk to hardcore it's all it's all in this in this uh, in these shells right here um, and and it's uh, it's all alphabetized and it's all chronological order and uh, I've also for the time being although I am out of room now so I'm gonna have to rethink what I do but I have, for example, VHS tapes in and DVDs in with the, uh, the CDs and so that, you know, it's in with the band. I'm a big Kiss fan from, from day one and they were, they were the, the catalyst that started the whole ball rolling with heavy metal for me. So, uh, eight tracks. So they're in there and they're in right next to the albums that, uh, that uh, they correspond with. Uh, box sets again, right up here. They're set up on top of the CDs. Unless they're smaller, like there's a Motorhead box set that will fit inside the, with the CDs, so that goes down here. Um, a little story about me and my journey. I started listening to metal, and, and I'll, I say metal, but I started listening to Kiss when I was about eight years old, so I'm around 1977. My first heavy metal record uh, was Alive 2. Now, there's going to be some of you that'll say Kiss isn't heavy metal, so I'll, I'll call it hard rock. I'll, I'll, I'll tame it down a little bit, but it was a catalyst that started everything. Um, from there, the 80s, it was, it was kind of you know, stairwayed up, ACDC, Ozzy Osbourne, Started getting into Priest and Iron Maiden. I got into them late, and they've never been one of my favorites. Uh, so that, you know, a lot of people were disgusted by that. I heard Venom and Metallica at the same time, around 1984. Uh, I heard the Metallica Creeping Death EP, which, you know, Creeping Death and then Am I Evil and Blitzkrieg. And at the same time, I heard the Venom Manitou EP. Um, I was more in, in love with the Metallica because at the time, thinking of what I was listening to, Metallica was more up my alley although I didn't I still enjoy the the Manitou EP um, but it took me a while to get into Venom um, from there Metallica kind of went into you know Slayer worked my way to the destructions the creators the death and then worked on to the earache bands and death metal and in the 90s you know with whole black metal thing with uh, church burnings and everything they really started to media really started to pick up on that so reading about that was intrigued so I started getting into some black metal and then just it just spiraled out of control at that point uh, when we started doing mail order my old roommate and I uh, a lot of that was really um, that was when we really started just buying everything we could get our hands on uh, because at that point we realized a lot of these bands were on these labels that were small and you either bought it now or it was going to be gone and even back then we realized you know if it's gone we were paying quite a bit of money sometimes or you know he was more so than I for CDs that had been out for five six years and we're thinking well 10 20 years from now what are they going to sell for well I'm finding that out now that you know when I post stuff on Facebook people were saying where did you get that? How did you get that? Man, that's go for, that goes for so much money. Well, at the time, I bought it for, you know, I might have found it used for eight bucks at a CD warehouse, you know. So, I've collected a lot over the years and amassed quite a bit. Uh, if I had to put a number on it, I would say probably close to 14,000 CDs. That's not an accurate number. I by no means have an actual count. Um, still in the process 
of getting an entire count and just that's the best guesstimate that I have and that includes other music. Now on this wall over here I have regular music so I have classic rock, country, any other things, some some rap, some R&B, some a little bit of this, a little bit of that. So that's all in this bookshelves here. This over here, you know, soundtracks, compilation CDs, comedy, and all that. You come over here, I had a couple vinyl racks built, so I've got vinyl. Um, up on top is all metal. So everything you see up here on both sides is all metal. There's some hard rock in here, but mostly it's metal. Same, same as with the shelves. Down below, you can't really see it, but there's cassettes. Now, all these cassettes here are are heavy metal, and then these two cases hold the remainder of the heavy metal that won't fit. And then this is just regular, regular rock, country, whatever is left over, and then comedy. So, of everything in every format, the thing I have the least of would be eight tracks, and then cassettes, then vinyl, and then CDs. Vinyl, I would say I have probably close to 3,000 CDs. Um, but over the course of time, my hope is to start pinpointing some different um, some different bands that I've, I've you know purchased over the years. A um, couple different things. One, uh, I have a group on Facebook that focuses on bands that are. Um, that are new, you know, they're, they're newer, they're, they formed after the year 2000. And so I contact those bands that I hear that, that, that are awesome and, and kind of, uh, kind of find out how to get their, their, their material, I'm able to get a hold of their material. I listen to it and send them some questions and, uh, and then I feature them in a feature on that, on that page, share it in as many groups as I can. Uh, to get their name out there. So one of the things that I hope to do is kind of in addition to doing all that, put that on Facebook posts or I mean uh, YouTube posts on this channel uh, so that people can see that and hopefully as you see it you'll share it with people or maybe you'll like it and you'll go check out the band. So uh, on those those days that I do these videos and they won't be nearly as long as this one, uh, my plan is to have uh, links and all that included somehow some way so that you'll be able to know where to go to get that stuff the other thing is to dig out stuff in my collection that you know you may never have heard before that might be something that you you know really you know should have heard but just never had the opportunity to hear now I'll give you an example and this this is maybe isn't the greatest example but um, for example this band the Everdon Poems Burn the Past. Uh, it was released on uh, initially on Invasion Records out of Germany, uh, reissued by Metal Blade subsidiary label Death Records. There is a song on here that just kills called Autumn Sombre Autumn. If you like speed thrash, it, it, it'll, it, it'll, it'll, it'll knock you on your ass. If you like death metal, it'll knock you on your ass just a kick-ass song um, they had two albums they had an EP and then this they did reissue it so those of you that are thinking huh Hammerheart reissued it and you see you see the price tag I found it used reason why I picked up the reissue mainly for less than less than seven bucks but uh, but yeah it's got the and it actually may have the EP on there as well. It looks like it does. The EP looks like this. And that one is actually on Invasion. That was an import. So just gives you an idea. I'm, I'm going into more detail on an actual uh, post or a video about a band. But just pulling something out of the collection that, that I really truly love that I just think didn't get the exposure that it needed. Um, so him hit bands that are new that a lot of people haven't heard about that I really think need to get more exposure. Bands that we just, for whatever reason, just, just slip through the cracks um, that I just think more people need to know about. 
just just to help build your your the the kick-ass bands that you have in your collection and then finally just hit up some classics now I don't know if you can hear the music in the background we got a little Slayer going on back there now um, some people say Slayer's overrated Slayer Hell Awaits Slayer Rain and Blood two of my favorite all-time thrash albums of all time you will never convince me otherwise that they aren't two of the best thrash albums ever now differences I started at the time that these were out listening to that and then there's some of there are some people that listen to it back then that don't agree with it but the a majority of us agree that these are two of the best thrash albums of all time I'm not gonna split hairs if you don't agree with that but there's this this kind of a movement if you want to call it going around now calling them overrated and calling stuff like this overrated or rain and blood overrated man at the time it was just it was it really sparked my my um, my path to go to to heavier stuff so you know I obviously I probably won't do a, a video on rain and blood but I may pick a band a classic band or I may pick Slayer but I may do a different album you know I may do like Haunting the Chapel which a lot of people don't necessarily hit up Venom I might just pick out of the you know something random like one of their singles or something and talk about that um, pull that out of the collection and talk about that so those are the different things that I, I plan to do with this channel and the whole purpose is uh, not to show off the collection, but let's be honest, I've had people accuse me of that in the past. And if you collect something, you don't do it without having the intention of being able to show it to people. It's in my basement. 99% of you that watch this video will never see it in, in person. So if that's the case, this is the only way you'll see it. This is the only way I can show people. I will show you my collection, but I'm not showing it off to you because I'm sure there are those of you out there that have collections just as massive as this, just as impressive as this. Hell, I find me on Facebook, show me pictures. I love seeing pictures of other people that are just as crazy and spend outrageous amounts of money as I have on this stuff because I love seeing people that have the same passion that I do about music. You know, I have other passions in life, you know, family and all that. But for as far as my personal passion with music goes, that's that's one of the, the big passions of my, you know, that's one of my biggest things is, is music. So I really hope that you guys that watch this will continue to check me out, continue to tell you and tell people, you know, hey, check this, check this channel out. If you have any suggestions, thoughts or ideas, please. Um, Feel free to let me know about it. Think it full of shit. Let, let me know about that too. You know, I sometimes have thick skin, sometimes I don't, but oh well, life goes on. Um, but I appreciate you guys taking the opportunity to watch this video, and hopefully, there'll be many more, and definitely won't be this long. But anyway, have a good night.